Today, a special opportunity for us to practice Kundalini Yoga from the perspective of addressing anxiety and sadness. As you sit here quietly, comfortably on your mat, or even in a chair, start to focus on your breath. Eyes are closed, shoulders are relaxed, chin is tucked in slightly. And these verbal clues and cues are for the alignment of your spine. And as you hold your spine in alignment, you start to have that flow of energy from a physical perspective and also from a yogic perspective. Energy as you breathe in, coming down one side of your spine and exiting on the opposite side. In the yogic sciences, this is called prana, life force, and apana. Apana is the opposite. It's the end result of energy being spent. And as you focus on your breath now, notice if it's coming more from one nostril or the other. Just spending a few moments tuning into your breath. After a few moments of this kind of deliberate conscious breathing, you'll notice whether it's coming from one side or the other. And that's perfectly fine. Every two and a half hours, in order to energize the brain, nostrils will switch. So you'll sense the air coming more from the right or the left. And then two and a half hours later, it will be different. The left nostril connected to the right hemisphere of the brain and vice versa. So as you inhale through the nostrils, they're also activating different hemispheres of the brain. Continuing to breathe now, press one hand over your belly button and one hand over your heart. Inhaling and exhaling. Taking a few moments here. We're preparing for the practice. We'll do a short round of physical movement, very gentle, everything that can be done either seated on a chair or on your mat, cross-legged, or with legs extended. We'll come back to the breath, explore some breathing patterns that help to calm the mind a walking meditation, and then one simple exercise you can take with you. As you inhale, be consciously aware of expanding your diaphragm, the area just at your belly button. And as you exhale, bring the belly button towards the spine. Inhaling and expanding, and exhaling, contracting. If this is your first time exploring with your breath in this way, you may notice now a calming effect by having the hands on the body, kinesthetic experience, touching experience. And you may also notice that your breathing is reversed. Maybe on your inhalation, you're sucking in, and on your exhalation, you're expanding. And that's part of a pattern of nervousness in the body. We're working towards inhaling and expanding, and exhaling, contracting. When you control your breath, you control your mind. And when you control your mind, you can control your life. 
This is the contribution that yoga and meditation have made to the world of health and wellness, an ancient contribution. Good, take one more cleansing breath, take a deep inhale and exhale, relax. Relax the hands together now, palms touching and pressing the thumbs together into the bone of the chest. Again, taking a few breaths here. This is called prayer mudra. As you hold yourself in prayer pose, you're balancing left and right, heating and cooling in the body, masculine and feminine, taking all of those polar opposites and bringing it to a center point. And now we begin with a mantra. Mantra, any sound vibration, communicates through the body on a cellular level, through meridian points, and then sends a message out into the universe and calls it back. That's the power of the words you choose and the power of a yogic tradition called mantra. Our opening mantra is the Adi Mantra, Ong Namo, Gurudev Namo, I bow to the teacher within. This is a way of calling your mind to attention, calling your mind to tune in. Sitting up tall and straight, eyes are closed, focusing in between the eyebrows and slightly above. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Inhale very deeply. Exhale. Inhale and let's tune in. Om Namo set your intentions for today's practice. Maybe we simply use the word peace. And through the nose, exhale. Feel the sound vibration in the room. Feel it resonating through your body, calming and relaxing effect. And then slowly bring your hands all the way down to your knees. And we begin with a physical practice now. From our earlier conversation about the spine and the nervous system, we know that the spine becomes a very important component of how energy moves through the body and also how it cues the brain. So we begin with spinal flex, keeping your hands here on the front of your shins. Inhale, pressing the spine forward, opening the heart. And as you exhale, rounding the spine, shifting the spine backwards slightly, coordinating the breath and the movement. Keep your eyes closed and chin parallel to the ground. Inhaling as you come forward, keeping the chin parallel to the ground, exhaling as you come back. Good. Do your best to focus on your chin. Where is it in relationship to the rest of your body? If you're tipping forward, we're engaging that sympathetic nervous system, the fight and flight. As you hold it steady, we're more in a neutral place and more able to tap into the parasympathetic nervous system, rest, and digest. Inhaling, coming forward, exhaling, going back. We do each of these movements for about a minute. That gives your blood and your body and your, fo your focus time to relax and time to regenerate. Inhaling, coming forward, opening the heart, opening the chest, and relaxing back. Inhale deeply, come to a straight spine. 
in through the nose, exhale, and relax. Keep your hands on your knees. This is called Sufi grinds, inhaling, coming all the way far forward, exhaling as you rotate all the way to the back. Again, be aware of where your chin is in relation to the rest of your spine. Here, as you move in this way, creating a gentle massage for the digestive organs, you're also spinning energy in a spiral from the base of the spine all the way up to the top of your head. We're working on multiple different levels here from a physical perspective, allowing the spine to broaden its movement range mentally, emotionally, and spiritually tapping into your inner resources of energy. Inhaling, coming forward, and exhaling as you go back. Pressing down on your knees as you move, going at a pace that's comfortable for you and in time with your breath. Continuing Sufi grinds. And take a deep inhale, come all the way to center. Holding steady. Taking a moment to connect with your breath, and now let's move in the opposite direction, inhaling as you come forward, exhaling as you move all the way to the back. Continuing Sufi grinds. In the world of health and wellness, tension in the body, mind, and spirit manifest in many ways. You may notice some stiffness, and that's your indicator of something that needs to be released. You may notice mental tension or even an emotional tension. All of these are perfect opportunities to engage in a yogic or meditative practice. Take a deep inhale, come to center and exhale, release. Bring the bottoms of your feet together for butterfly. We've been seated, seated cross-legged. Now we're going to change that in order to loosen up the thighs, loosen up the hips. Bringing your hands to the top of your toes, start to lift your knees up and down like the wings of a butterfly. Here, as you move your hips, and remembering that all body parts are connected internally, that as you move your hips, you also make a connection to your diaphragm, the internal workings of your breathing apparatus. And so as you release the diaphragm, you may start to notice that your breath is running a little bit more freely. Inhaling and exhaling, going at your own pace, moving the knees up and down like the wings of a butterfly. Here the practice is to keep your eyes closed. And as you keep your eyes closed, the temptation to compare to compete is eliminated. And also allowing you to focus a little bit more on your own internal experience. Good, take a deep inhale. And exhale, come back to cross-legged position. This time bringing your hands on top of your shoulders. Here, keep a Keep your chin slightly tucked in, and as you inhale, open the chest, open the heart, looking up as if you were looking at the sky, and then exhale, come back to chin parallel to the ground. Inhale, open the chest, look up, and exhaling, coming back to center point. Continue now, go at your own pace. Here, this exercise is allowing us to reverse something that's been recently documented called text neck. Sounds like what it is when you are looking at your phone 
Your head is generally tipped down. Again, as you tip your head down, you're connecting with the sympathetic nervous system, fight and flight, imagine that. And so now as we tip back, looking back, we engage a more relaxation response in the body itself. Some really good advice I have to you is that your phone comes to you, you don't go to your phone. So keep your neck as stable as you can when you are texting or looking at information on your small device. And the same is true for when you're working at a keyboard, that you give yourself some time to relax, to bring your neck back to a stable position, and that you keep that awareness of your body and your posture. Inhale, come to center, holding steady. And exhale, relax. Bring your hands all the way down to your knees. And let's release some tension around the neck and shoulders. Inhaling, bring the shoulders all the way up to the ears. And exhaling as you release back down. Inhaling as you come up. Exhaling as you go down. For a lot of us, as we work on these devices, keeping our fingers on a keyboard or on a desk creates some tension in the shoulders and the neck. Releasing that now. Inhaling, coming up and exhaling going down. We'll do a few more warm-up exercises. This is really to concentrate, to allow the body to relax so that we're more open to the breathing practice and more expansive around the lungs. Inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. This is the way to deepen the breath. Inhale, bring the shoulders all the way up. And exhale, relax all the way down. Good. Drop your chin towards the chest. And now we're making big circles, dropping the right ear to the right shoulder. Inhaling, circling all the way to the back. And exhaling as you circle all the way to the front. Notice that each of the movements that we've done now in our short practice together have all been very rhythmic, using a pattern of breath and a pattern of movement. Again, as you coordinate a conscious breath with movement, you start to relax. Part of working through anxiety and sadness and even depression is to activate some healthy things that can help relax you naturally. And here, simple movements are our key facilitators. Inhale very deeply, come to center. And through the nose, exhale. Go in the opposite direction, same exercise, opposite direction. Breathing deeply. Breathing consciously. Inhale, come to center. And through the nose, exhale. Taking a moment now to tune back into your breath. Come back to a long, deep breath. And noticing any difference between when you first started and where you are now. Notice the flow of breath from one nostril to the other. Has anything shifted? Place one hand over the center of your chest and one hand over your abdomen. 
continuing that pattern of breathing that we did before, inhaling and expanding, feeling the diaphragm, and as you exhale, bringing the belly button towards the spine. Are you able to fill in a little bit more deeply now? Just notice. This attention to the breath, this opening of the breath and understanding of the breath as energy comes from a yogic tradition and allows us to very simply refocus the mind and to calm the body. Just taking a few moments to notice. And now let's do a practice that helps to balance both hemispheres of the brain. So we heard in our early discussion that when one part of the brain is more active than the other, it starts to lead to emotional imbalances, things that we identify as anxiety, depression, or sadness. And let's now take our own hand in terms of rebalancing. Bring your right hand to the right nostril, and on your left side, bringing the first finger and thumb to touch. Pressing the right thumb against the right nostril, inhaling and exhaling completely through the left. This is called alternate nostril breathing. And here, as you breathe through the left nostril, you're actually activating the right hemisphere of the brain. The right hemisphere of the brain is in charge of your conceptual thought, thinking outside the box, abstract thinking. There's also triggers, a relaxation response, and a cooling response in the body itself. Fingers are straight up like an antenna. Keep your hand in place, take a deep inhale and gently relax your hand all the way down, both hands in Gya Mudra, exhale. Moving now to the opposite side, left thumb covers left nostril, inhaling and exhaling completely through the right. And now maybe you're thinking to yourself, feels great, but how do I apply this? Where do I do this in my regular life where it doesn't look funny or strange that I'm breathing in this way? And so here are some helpful tips. You can always excuse yourself to the washroom and take a few breaths. It doesn't have to be a full minute. Even five breaths will help to rebalance the brain. You can do this in the car when you're seated at a stoplight When you're waiting in line, a very subtle way to hold the breathing pattern is to think about breathing through one nostril versus the other. Being coming consciously aware. Good, hold your hand in place. Take a deep inhale. Relax the hand all the way down, exhale. Good, and now let's balance the brain. So we've energized both sides. Now taking equal time to Balance both hemispheres of the brain. Bring your left thumb to cover the left nostril. Inhaling right. Cover the right nostril with the pinky and exhale left. Inhaling right. Exhaling left. Continue. you're seated cross-legged and you're starting to feel a little tension in your hips, feel free to extend your legs all the way out in front so that you're comfortable. More important that you're comfortable than adhering to cross-legged. 
We want to concentrate on the breath rather than pain in the body. Good, take a deep inhale here. Relax the hands all the way down, exhale. And now let's switch sides. Right thumb covers right nostril, inhaling left. Use the pinky, cover the left nostril, exhale right. Breathing long and deep, noticing your breath. your hands in place, take a deep inhale, and exhale, gently lower your hands down, and for 30 seconds now, just breathe normally. Just check in mentally, how do you feel? mind starts to wander, just come back to the breath. Just noticing that the process of meditation is really about getting comfortable with what's happening in your brain rather than trying to push anything away or fight any thoughts that are coming. Just allow it. In the next segment of our time together, I'll teach you a walking meditation that uses a sound as your way to check in. Good. Sitting up tall and straight, take a deep inhale. And exhale, counting to 10. And when you get to 10, gently open your eyes, smile and look around. Whole new world in front of you now. Good. Find a way to sit up tall and straight and then come into a standing position for walking meditation. So we're gonna leave everything as it is. So that means you get to walk around with your eyes closed, first of all, and introduce a mantra, a very powerful sound vibration. From here, this is a very practical application. As you're walking from the car to your home or from the car to the studio or walking your dog, a very simple way to build a meditative presence in your mind is to walk and focus. The focal point on this particular walking meditation is the sound of sat, S-A-T, sat, and nam, sat, nam. Sat meaning truth, nam meaning name, it's a mental sound. So simply now just walk around the room, each foot that you put down sat, and the next foot nam. Sat Nam, Sat Nam. Please begin, just walk, keep your eyes open, and use the mental sound in your mind. If you'd like to practice it out loud, just to hear yourself do it, feel free. Sat Nam, Sat Nam, Sat Nam. And allow it to be a meditative experience, just like all of the practice that we did earlier that you're moving gracefully and rhythmically. Find your own pace, sat, nam, sat, nam. Or maybe your walk is a little bit slower. Sat, nam, sat, nam, sat, nam.
You can also turn a walking meditation into a gratitude practice. Today I'm thankful for, and each step you take becomes a different option in your life, a different person in your life, a different gift that you've been given over time. Take this and turn it into whatever it needs to calm the spirit, calm the soul. So Satnam, from a yoga perspective, uses a mantra and a gratitude practice, something that you can activate to remind yourself of the good that is taking place. Just about another minute to go. Feel free, move around. Again, you can do this when you're walking the dog, when you're doing groceries. Anytime you're alone and you have a little bit of a walk to take or a stroll from one place to another, a really good way to activate your consciousness. Keep your chin up, keep your eyes open. Sat, meaning truth, nam, meaning name. And then make your way all the way over to your mat. Two more short practices that I'd like to show you. Good. Take a deep inhale and slowly settle yourself all the way down to your mat. Again, one more breathing technique that you can use at any time. The breathing pattern is to inhale and then exhale double the time. But we're gonna use this rather than a long deep breath, more of a pattern of breathing. So we'll inhale for three sniffs and exhale in six. Take that same meditative posture, fingers are up or palms are facing down. Inhaling in three sniffs, exhale six. Again, depending on how you have practiced your breathing practice, this may be a little bit challenging. That's okay, stick with it. It'll, it'll come over time. If you find you can do more, you can increase to four sniffs, exhaling eight, or you can go to two sniffs, exhaling four. Lots of options. We're starting here with three sniffs, on the inhalation and six on the exhalation. Good, take a deep inhale. And through the nose, exhale. Good, check in, see how you feel. We offer breath as your first option for regulating mind and emotions because it's the easiest to access. And now something a little bit unusual, something that is a totally different way of calming the, the brain and the mind. Extend your arms all the way out to the sides and then bring your arms just up a little bit so you're not at shoulder level, just a little bit higher than shoulder level. Watch out for your neighbors, make sure that you have lots of space. And from the wrist now, start to flutter your hands. Flutter, flutter, flutter. Find a way to hold your arms steady. Here we're working with meridian points, a very easy, relaxed way to change the functioning of the brain. Your hands are very sensitive. Dozens and dozens of meridian points that connect to the brain, particularly in the rest of the body. That's how you know that when you've touched something hot is that it sent a message to your brain. So here, as you flap in this way, the wrists are conveying information to the brain, recalibrating, so to speak. So it's a wrist, a very free floating with the wrist. Keep your fingers out of the way and jiggle from side to side, up and down, actually. 
Keep your eyes closed, relax. Nothing to look at. You can admire me later. <laughs> Good, go, 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 go. So yes, at some point you'll be like, oh, I'm getting tired. I don't want to do this anymore. Keep going, keep going. Flapping the wrists up and down, up and down, up and down. Simple movement, two minutes just like this, and then give you time to reflect on your experience. Flap, 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 like a wings of a bird, you're about to take off. There you go, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the nose. Kundalini Yoga has lots and lots of practical applications, and this is a really powerful way to tap in to your body's own internal knowingness. Take a deep inhale and exhale. Sitting quietly for a moment, just noticing your experience. Out of the few practices that we did, the warm-ups, the breathing, long deep breathing, alternate nostril breathing, the walking meditation, the two to one breath, and then this wristing, wrist fluttering. Let's make a decision now to practice one of those tomorrow, or even later today, so that you can activate the learning that you've had just now. Remember that you'll get this podcast once we're done today. I'll email it to you. Press your palms together. Close with a long sat, short nam. Take a deep inhale. And exhale. Inhale deeply, long sat, short nam. briefly in reverence to yourself, to your own inner learning, to the inner teacher. Thank you for being here today. Lots of good work. Satnam. Satnam, Satnam. Perfect. All right. Something I'd like to offer all of you is an understanding, a deeper understanding of Kundalini Yoga. This particular style of practice is actually a healing system. And beneath the healing system, is an even older science called numerology. Numerology is the science of understanding your date of birth, your day, month, year of birth, answering the five questions of life. Who am I? What am I here to master? What are my gifts and talents? What's the minimum I must do before I leave this planet? And how do I transform my life? These are the five questions of life. And for each one of you, there is a very specific answer to all of those questions. So what I'd like to offer you is a year-long subscription to numerology. So once a month, we'll get together and we'll explore what your numbers have to say about you and where you are progressing in your life. Wherever you are, there's a meditation, there's a kriya, there's a small activity, there's a shift in consciousness that we can start to work with in order to get that change going. It's similar to a chiropractic adjustment at the right level of mental awareness and the right consciousness with the heart and things start to sh change, they start to shift. So that my friends, that's uh, generally speaking $60 per session and for you and today we do a full month, so 12 sessions for $300 plus tax. And whether you're close by and want to come into the studio or you want to do it via Skype, I'm happy to help you with that. So send me a message if you're interested, love at yogavision.com and then we can chat more and see if it's the right fit for you.